<coughs> Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. <coughs> we are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure this book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today is our day number five. Today we'll work the prop. Today we'll work on the problems that you will find on page number 79. Page 79. Turn to it. The very first problem that we find on that page is number 31. Let's see what it has to say. In number 31, we are told that x is positive. And the question simply is x over 50 plus x over 25 is what percent of x? That's all they want to know. x over 50, as we know, for example, 1 over 50 is simply 2%, is 2 out of 100. And similarly, 1 over, 1 over 25, 1 25th of something is simply 4%. 4 multiplied up and divided by 4, that's 4%. So altogether is 6%. That's all it is. This quantity is what percentage of x? The answer is 6%. Number 32. If I forget to tell you to pause the video after each problem that is put on the blackboard, pause the video yourself. For example, next one, as soon as I finish writing the whole thing, pause the video and do it yourself first. As I have said many, many times before. Number 32. In 32 we are told that we have, we have, we have burned fuel at the rate of 5 gallons every 2 hours. Pay attention. It is not 5 gallons every hour, it is 5 gallons every 2 hours. We are told that we are going at the speed of one mile per minute. That is our speed. And we are told also for also that we have used up exactly three and three quarter gallon. Three and three quarter gallon. The question simply is what is the distance? Traveled. How far did we travel given the fact that we were burning the gas at the rate of 5 gallons every 2 hours and the fact that we have burned up exactly 3 and 3 quarter hour going at the speed of 1 mile per minute. I'll give you a second to pause the video. It will also give me a chance to change the marker. Pause the video, do it yourself first. Let's see what we can do. We need the room so I need to erase all of this thing. So basically, we want to find out how far we have traveled. In order, for, in order for us to figure out how far we have traveled, we have to first figure out how long we have been traveling, the amount of time. Set it up as a proportion problem. Proportion problem is right here, gallons over hours. Gallons over hour, and we know we are burning five gallons every two hours. We also know that during our travel, during our journey, we burned three and three quarter hour, I believe it was three and three quarter gallons, I believe. Three and three quarter gallons. Gallons is on the top. And here's the, this is the hour. If we solve for x, it will tell you how long we've been traveling, how many hours, and once we know that, we can figure out the distance we have traveled, because the speed is very straightforward. It's just one mile per minute. The solve for x, cross multiply and solve for x, this gives us that x is equal to two times 2 times 3 and 3 quarter over 5 and bring the x over there. So far so good. Let's multiply top and bottom by 2 and you, you will see in a second why I did that. When we multiply top and bottom by 2, we end up with 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 quarter, 4, 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 quarter, this is 3 quarter right here, over 5 times 2 which is 10. The rest is very straightforward. 4 times 3 is 12. Oh, sorry. 4 times 3 is 12. 
and 4 times 3 quarter. 4 times 3 is 12 and 4 times 3 quarter is 3 over 10. Which means we have been, we have been traveling for our hour and a half. We have been traveling for hour and a half, 90 minutes. So we have gone 90 miles. Because it's one mile every minute. Number 33. Number 33. Number 33 will require a little bit of writing on my part. Actually, a lot of writing. Number 33. We are going to buy. We are going to buy doors. Two two kinds of doors. The doors made out of pine wood, and the doors made out of oak wood. We are told that we bought. We are told that we bought. Five pine doors and six oak doors. We are further told that each oak each oak door costs twice as much as pine at the regular price. This comparison it costs twice as much when they are being sold at the regular price. We are further told that the oak, sale, oak door is on sale. Oak doors are on sale at 25% off. Pine doors, the regular price is $40. The question simply is, what did we pay? For the eleven doors, the eleven doors that we bought, how much did we pay all together for these eleven doors? Given these facts, the fact that all each oak door costs twice as much as pine doors when they are being sold at regular prices, also the fact that the oak door is like right now is on sale at twenty five percent off, and pine doors regular price is forty dollars. Do it yourself. I'll give you a second to pause the video. Let's do it on the top. We need the room. So, we know right here the pine door, the regular price is $40. Pine doors, regular price of pine doors, pine doors, regular price is $40. That implies that the regular price of oak door must be $80. K for oak, I'm using K for oak and P for pine. But the oak door is on sale. Oak door is on sale at 25% off. Oak is on sale at 25% off. Which means, let me erase this part so we don't, we don't want to work around it. If oak door is on sale right now, which means that the price right now is $60 for the oak doors. That's it. Now we can figure out the total paid. Total paid must be, since we bought six of these, at $60 each, that's $360. And we, paid, we bought five of the pine, and the pine doors are $40 each, that's $200. We paid a grand total of 560 for these 11 doors. Let's look at number 34. In number 34 we have three quantities. If you have the book in front of you, you will see that this is a very long minute question. They're talking about three kinds of apples, Macintosh, Rome and wine wine app, whatever it is, I'm just going to call them quantities. There are three kinds, three, three, three numbers, M, R, and W. And we are told that the total has to be 25. We are further told that W has to be greater than M, and W has to be greater than R. The question simply is, what is the least, 
least value for w. These are all integers. These are all integers. When they tell you that each, <coughs> when they tell you that the each crate contains the same kind of apples, and you cannot have half a crate of this one and half a crate of that one and make one. That's their long-winded way of saying that they are whole numbers. They are integers. That's what that is. So what can we do? They all have to add up to 25. We have to make sure that the W has to be more than M and W has to be more than R. And at the same time, we want W to be as small as possible. So we have a W, we have an M, and we have an R. If we meet, if we make all of them eight, that will make it 24. Because in order for us to, in order for us to make this W as small as possible, we want to make this thing as large as possible. But at the same time, we can't stop there. We can't obviously we can't make seven or six or five because W has to be more than M and W has to be more than R. So what we need to do is make it nine. That's all. Make it nine. Now these two numbers are as large as possible. The fact that they two are equal doesn't matter. Now the fact that these two are as large as possible, this has to be nine. That's all. Number thirty-five. The smallest possible value of W is 9. Number 35. In number 35 we are told that we are going to buy two bicycles. I am going to call them a cheap one and an expensive one. $250 one and $375 one. And we are told that we sold both for $250 total. Not each, we did not make a $250 profit each, but the total profit on both of them was $250 we are told. We are told that one of them was sold for $450. But they don't tell us which one. The question is, which could, which could be the profit from the other one? We know that one of those two, one of these two bicycles was sold for 450. Given these facts, what could be the what could be the profit from the sale of the other bicycle? And the answer choices are 75, 100, 125, 150, and 175. Do it yourself. I'll give you a second to, for you to be able to pause the video. Let's see what we can do. I need to raise it now. So there are two possible scenarios. Scenario 1 and Scenario 2. In Scenario 1, you have a cheap one, an expensive one. This was 250, this was 375, we paid 250 for this one, 375 for this one. Or if this was the one that was sold for 450. We don't know. It was either this one was sold for 450 or that one was sold for 450. That's the second scenario. If that's the case, then the profit here would be $200 from this bicycle, the cheap one. If the profit from this one is $200, that implies that we must have made a $50 profit on this one. But $50 is not one of the answer choices. So it's this scenario we're dealing with. Cheap one, expensive one, $375, $250. It was this one that we sold for $400, $450 rather. And by selling it for $450, we made a profit of $75. If we made a profit of $75 on this one, and given the fact that the total profit we made, we were told is $250, we must, made a, we must have made a profit of $175 on this guy. And that's your answer right there. Because the first one we've tried did not work. It's, it's possible, but it's not one of the answer choices. So that wasn't the case, obviously. Number 36.
Number 36 is quite straightforward, very simple. We are told that k squared is equal to m squared. And the question is which which must be true. We are looking for a statement that has to be true all the time, not, not something that may be true at some time but not all, and not always. Let's see what we can do. The simplest, easiest, quickest, the most efficient way here is to make up numbers. I'm just going to make up twos. So perhaps, perhaps k is 2 and m is 2. Or perhaps k is negative 2 and this is negative 2. In either case, when we square the quantity, it's going to equal. Because of the fact that we are told that there is square k squared is equal to m squared, which means that we do not know. Perhaps they are both positive, perhaps they are both negative, or one is positive, one is negative, and the other way around. So there are four possible scenarios. Let's look at the answer choices. The first one says k equals m. That may be true, that may not be true. If they are both twos, that would work. But if one of them is negative, it would not work. Similarly, the next one says k is equal to negative m. If m happens to be negative 2 and k happens to be positive 2, it would work. But if m also happens to be positive 2, it would not work. The next one says k is equal to absolute value of m. Well, it doesn't matter what m is, m can be positive or negative. But what if k is negative 2? If k is negative 2, that would not be true. Because absolute value of anything cannot be negative 2, obviously. And the D is the same thing in the opposite way. I'm not going to waste time here. The correct answer is that the absolute value of K it has to be the same as the absolute value of M. That's the only thing that we can say for sure. The only thing we can say with certainty is that if K squared is equal to M squared, then we know for a fact, regardless of whether they're positive or negative, their absolute values have to be the same. That was number 36. Number 37. In number 37 we are told that we have three people, A, B and C. A, B and C. We were told that they were paid a total of $780. As soon as I finish setting it up, you do it yourself. We are told that each person is paid in proportion to the hours he or she worked. We are told that A worked 15 hours, B worked 20 hours, and C worked 30 hours. There is nothing in this problem. We simply have to figure out how much was A paid given the fact that A worked 15 hours. And but because they are paid in proportion, which means that whatever A was paid, C must have been paid twice as much because C worked twice as many hours. Since they are paid a total of 780, we have to first figure out what is the total number of hours they worked. Because we have to figure out the hourly wage. Once we have the total number of hours, that's 5, that's 65, there you go. If we divide 780 by 65, that will give us the hourly wage. Once we have the hourly wage, we can multiply by 15 and find out the A. I didn't give you a chance to pause, did I? All right. Let's divide 780. Let's divide 780 by 65. 780 by 65. What can we do here? Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 6 is made out of 1, 5. After we take away 5 from the 6, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 5, becomes 15. 15 is made up of 3 fives. Let's divide top, top by 5. Seven, 7 has 1, 5. After we take away 5 from the 7, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 8, becomes 28. 28 has 5 fives. 5 fives are 25. After we take away 25 from 28, we have a remainder of 3. 3 goes and joins the 0, and becomes a 30. And 30 is made up of Six fives. Now let's divide top and bottom by 13. Don't worry about it, it will divide. Let's divide top and bottom by 13. 13 
15 is made up of 113. 15 is made up of 113. After we take away 13 from the 15, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 6, becomes 26. And 26 is made up of 230. There you go. It's $12 per hour. It is $12 per hour. The guy worked 15 hours times 12. 12 times 5 is 60, 0, carry 6. 12 times 1 is 12, plus 6 is 18. So A is going to get a grand total of $180. That was the very last problem on the page. Since it was the very last problem on the page, that was the end of the show. We'll meet again tomorrow, and we'll pick up from where we left off. Alright? Bye now.